The Irish Rally Podcast is brought to you in association with PFT Travel, Tech and Tools, Rally Connection, SVS Productions, Hiravan, and Lines of Limerick. Welcome to another very special episode of the Irish Rally Podcast. It's, uh, it's not often you get to talk to a world champion on the, the podcast. And on that note, who could it be? Why the man himself, Mr. William Creighton. William, you're very welcome once again, sir. Thank you. Thanks. It's uh, it's good to be on and chat about it. Ah, sure. Look, I mean, at this stage, you, you've had a week, I suppose, in many respects, it gives you an opportunity to maybe have that little bit of a reflection in the days afterwards. There's a lot going on. You're probably exhausted. You have the highs, you have the lows. I'd say you can't even think. So what are things like now, what, seven, eight odd days on? It's uh, It's been cool. You know, it's been busy the last week, obviously, you know, um, doing a lot of things, you know, media and podcasts. And uh, yeah, it's just been generally busy. And I was over at M Sport then. Um, helping them with a with a PR day and uh, yeah it's been flat out but you know uh, there's been a lot of people that have messaged to congratulate me and um, it's been it's been a nice few days celebrating yeah I bet it has I bet it has I have to ask you right we'll go we'll go back a little bit further into your story in a few moments time but going back um, into the airport right and being greeted what was that like <laughs> yeah pretty special um a lot of people traveled, you know, to be there. They had to drive, you know, a few hours down the road. So, you know, it's not handy. So fair play to the guys that, that made that effort. And, you know, it's much appreciated. So, yeah, to be greeted in that way with, you know, a lot of people there and taking photos, uh, it was nice. Um, and then I traveled up the road and it was me, Liam and, and Marcus in the car. And we were chatting about what, what we were getting up to that evening and, to be honest, we were saying about how we're looking forward to an early night and just chilling out. Uh, and then we drove through, drove up onto my road and, and saw a few banners and a few um, uh, cardboard cutouts. And then when we got to the house, there's, you know, 30, 40 or 50 people standing in the yard celebrating. So it was a complete surprise and a shock. Um, so, yeah, really special. And, you know, those sort of things will, will stick by you. So, you know, that was organized by by DGM and Race and Rally. So um thank you to those guys and yeah, we had a bit of crack that night. Yeah, nice surprise indeed. I can only imagine, I mean, in ordinary circumstances, when you've got the lead into an event like that, you have the weekend itself, the the highs and lows, the adrenaline is something that would have you feeling pretty exhausted anyway. But to have the weekend that you had and how it panned out <laughs> I don't know how you kept it going even, I suppose like you can't say you couldn't have had any more adrenaline left come Monday, Tuesday, surely. So what you're going on fumes at that stage, I'd imagine. I think I was running on adrenaline after the recce, to be honest, the way it went, because you know, the with the weather being so bad out there, the recce was, you know, called off at some stages and uh basically did, we did four days of recce, um, not knowing what you were doing each morning. So it it wasn't the normal structure that we were used to in the WRC, so it was quite strange and for a co-driver i think pretty stressful um see so yeah, it wasn't most ideal start to the rally and obviously then with the pressure and what happened that uh it was a long few days um so yeah we were we were definitely running on a drown by the time we got back home but whenever you get you know with the result that we had it was you know nothing at that stage was a problem mm. uh, one of the first things that kind of struck me whenever disaster i suppose struck on the on the friday and you did what you did to get the car back which is remarkable now the distance is changing every day i've heard 1k i've heard 2k i've heard 5k 10k 3k any idea what the actual distance was to be honest or, I don't 30 know. was it 30 <laughs> I think we should have um yeah let's say 3k was a bit exaggerated i think but um we definitely uh well we had to push the car where we could it was that heavy that you know anytime we got to a hill we we couldn't um so we were lucky that actually a lot of it from from the end of the second stage of Saturday morning to the tire zone, quite a lot of it was downhill, so we were able to push the car, get it going, and 
sort of let it freewheel. Um, and then whenever we got to the town where the refuel or the, the tire fittings in was, we were, we were able to push it the rest. So, um, yeah, it wasn't handy, but uh, we needed to try and do everything that we could to to not do any more damage to the car so that, you know, hopefully the guys were, well, what we hoped they'd be able to fix the the issue in the tire zone, um, which we then had to retire the car, but, you know, at least we didn't do any more damage. Mm, yeah, man, that's that's exhausting itself. But the question I was actually going to ask before we got sidetracked and had a bit of crack there was, uh, is that where somewhere someone like Alan Harry comes in? So you talk about mindset in that moment, right? And you've probably got... Uh, a plan or a variety of them I suppose in the lead up to it and something like that happens and then you have the wherewithal I suppose like, right, well, I simply have to do this let's do it let's give it a bash does that steeliness come into play does he come into play at that particular juncture and what and what he has done with, with yourself and Liam and, and, and all the lads I suppose in the academy yeah it's, it's definitely okay you can't prepare for that exact situation but you know the work that we've been doing with the academy has you know is to give you a particular mindset um and i think that's definitely shown you know showed in that situation so but you know I, i'd like to think that you know liam and i wouldn't give up anyway yep. so um we wanted to you know we wanted it so bad that we we're willing to do anything that we could so um but for sure you know the work that we do in the academy is trying to create a mindset that you know makes us fit for what we're trying to achieve and um you, you have to be strong-minded um in this sport never mind when you're got situations like that so yeah there's no doubt about it that it, that it paid dividends then mm. there's obviously a thing as you just alluded to in your mind that says uh never never give up and you never were going to give up but to still have i suppose hope optimism and everything and you kept going and there's a saying the harder i try the luckier i get and i suppose you need a bit of luck you didn't have it on the friday you got it later on in the weekend and by putting yourself in that position that's ultimately where things like this happen and that's how you can be successful sometimes, but just not giving in, like. Yeah, I suppose, and anyway, it's a bit cliche, but you know, if you know, if we give up on the okay, we we knew we were in a in a pretty poor situation that the chances of turning it around were slim. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that was definitely in my mind. But you know, if we give up, then we had nothing to fight for. So uh, you know, that wasn't really an option, and we didn't want to do that. So we prepared. As normal, we got back to the accommodation and got through the notes and um, thankfully heard from the team later on that night that they'd been able to work in the car and that they had fixed it. Um, so, yeah, I suppose even at that stage, it's, you know, you don't, with, with the problem that we had, um, any engine issue, it's hard to know. I mean, all they did, all they could do was drive the car from the the service bay to Park Fermi. So we weren't going to be sure Um how the car was going to react until we got it into the stages and and thankfully it, it turned out the way it did so you know the job they did on on friday evening was was quite unbelievable so thank you to Sport poland mm-hmm. uh, can i just rewind to i think what was possibly the first time i had you on this podcast which was um i'm going to say probably about 26 months ago at this stage right just over two years where you'd just been to alton park whatever um JWRC is still probably fine in your feet. At that particular point, what? So you're 25 now, yeah? Mm-hmm. So you're 20, 23, 22 going on 23, whatever it was at the time. And you go into this with um, a process in mind. And I think a big compliment that I would have to give is the fact that you don't lose sight of what that process is, even though there is setbacks. And there was setbacks over the past couple of years. But you look at how you approach everything this year, you garner the experience, you... You know, you drove on, you stuck with it, and you learn from it. Like, there's a lot of guys with him that probably would maybe just give up on the process a couple of years ago. I don't want to be going back to this whole cliche thing again, but that is true. How, in those moments, I suppose, when you weren't getting success possibly uh, instantaneously, which a lot of people in around your age actually want, but don't understand that it doesn't happen like that. How, how did that process kind of unfold for you? How did you find that, I suppose, over the last couple of years? Yeah, we've had to be determined, I think. Um, and I'd like to think, you know, that's you know, that's what we showed. Uh I've also been extremely lucky that I've had the opportunity to keep going. You know, uh we didn't we won this championship in our third year competing in it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm lucky that I've had the opportunity to stick at it and had the opportunity to okay, we can get experience this year, gather that and then go again next year. Um okay, we maybe didn't have a three-year plan at the very beginning but you know we 
we kept at it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that I'm sure could work to what we've achieved, um, but maybe didn't get the opportunity to stick at it for, for you know, maybe can only do it one year. Uh, and there is some drivers that have gone there and won it in their first year, and I, I think that's hats off to them. That's really impressive. So, um, but yeah, I think determination and, you know, just sticking at it. Uh, there's been a lot of hard work put in by lots of people. And as you said about, you know, the work that we do with the academy and, you know, you not all of it is as glamorous as it, uh, it looks. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into the logistics and, you know, testing and watching onboards, um, which, you know, as again, I'm very lucky, you know, I'm lucky to do what, what we've done. We've had such a fun, th- you know, three years competing in the junior WRC, but there is a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes and for that now to pay off and, and reward everyone is, is very special. Yeah, the incremental progress is is pretty cool. And would it be fair to say, William, like when you go back to, I suppose, the younger days as a little kid and you're going around the farm and you're maybe trying to get a spin out whoever's on the land at the time was there, right? This this can't have been part of the plan. Am I, am I wrong to suggest that? Or would it, would it have been something in the back of your mind? No, I can't say that it was always a plan to, you know, be a, a junior WRC champion, for example. But, you know, whenever I race carts, I think every young kid racing carts wants to be in Formula One. Then whenever we shifted to rallying, I quickly became, right, that's how, how high can we get up this? You know, let's get... I suppose when we moved to the the British Rally Championship, that was a huge step for us. Um, you know, we didn't think that we would ever get to that level, and then when we won that to get to the the WRC, that was that was a massive step. So it's it was just step by step. You know, I think with us, I'm extremely competitive, so that was part of the reason why you know, okay, let's look what's next. And I suppose that's the most difficult thing in motorsport. Once you get to the top of one level, then it it just gets to the to the next level and that requires more budget and more commitment um in all aspects so uh it's definitely been a long journey um and uh you know it's exciting for what it it might bring in the future now yeah and obviously one of those things that it is going to bring in the future is a four-round program in a fiesta rally too i think in, in wrc too next year so and also i think a couple of hundred uh pretty tires to go along with it so not not too shabby decent decent enough prize and um that's obviously something very much to to look forward to i get the feeling while that's absolutely awesome it's probably only part of um maybe where your vision and dream is over the next couple of years would it be right to say that yeah it's it's an unbelievable prize and you know it it helps you get that jump into the next level but you know that's you know, it's no secret that this next level now is so competitive with such few seats available in, in the P1 category that, you know, the Rally 2 class is, is seriously competitive and you've got some, you know, we've got so many top drivers in that. So, you know, with such a high now in the JWRC, you know, making that next step into Rally 2 is, um, you know, going to require as much work and determination and commitment. So, yeah, we need to enjoy it now and, and then sit down and, and have a team talk and, and see what we can put together and, and come up with a plan. Mm-hmm. And pretty much looking forward to seeing how how that's all going to unfold. I suppose a lot of people um, that have done interviews with you so far have, have made reference, I suppose, to, to Craig Breen naturally, um, given the fact that he'd won this as well. Um, it's one of those mad years, I suppose, in in one sense, but people are making that comparison and, and rightly so. Uh, how quickly did he come into your mind? Do you mind me asking maybe after um, you find out your world champ? I mean, he's been in, I think he's been in everyone's mind throughout the whole year. So, you know, I, I was chatting to someone earlier and I said about how I was listening to the podcast with him and Bex um, about his story. And I, I was listening to this before I, I went to Greece and how crazy his last rally was in, in the junior championship to win and what he had to do. So, yeah, you know, it's been a difficult year um, for a number of reasons in, in Irish motorsport. So for me to, you know, bring good news and, and a smile to a lot of people, that, that makes me feel good. But, you know, I've, you know, immediately after the event, I suppose I'm thinking about how, you know, it must be difficult for Craig's family. Um, I have no doubt it brings back special memories for them about what he did in 2011. So yeah, for me to be 
you know, that comparison to be made um, is very special and, you know, an honour for me to be named alongside a lot of the drivers, you know, uh, Craig particularly, but, you know, all the guys that have won this championship before and gone on to do great things. So, yeah, look, it's very special and, and a very difficult time, I'm sure, for Craig's family. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And just to, to go back to, I suppose, the national inter international coverage probably of of what you've achieved as well. Like BBC are are, are pretty good, I think, when it comes to motorsport. Um, RT probably could be better. I'll put it to you that way. But you're the one that's there in the spotlight. You you get the coverage. Uh, you know, you're on Game On. You have the, the TV aspect to it. You have the articles up online. And I mean, we really don't see enough of it uh, in in my opinion so that's that's got to be particularly pleasing that i suppose you're the one they're, that they're talking about and in in many respects i suppose i would hope probably from a selfish point of view that because of what you've done maybe we'll get a little bit more of it as well because you know one of the difficult things at times is when something bad does happen and it's everywhere and rightly so given the stature of the people but it's everywhere on the news part and every other week, I suppose, we don't see where we'd like to see, which is on the sports part. And for that to happen, I think, in the last week is is another pleasing thing that I've seen. Uh, I don't know if you have any particular perspective or, or thoughts on that. Yeah, I suppose I'm obviously going to be biased, but, you know, rallying <laughs> is such a, such a crazy sport. You know, some of the stories, you know, even from my JWRC year, and that's not even going into the, the, the top WRC guys, you know, there's it's just a cool sport and i think that you know with the coverage that it gets now with rally tv what was um all live you know it's it's done so much for the sport and you know i hope that that continues because um you know i think once we draw people in and, and new people watch the sport you know they'll they'll understand what it's all about and, and how cool it is but yeah for me it was it was a busy week and got a lot of, a lot of coverage which is which is great um so yeah, it's. I suppose I always, you know, your mind wanders and you think, what will it be like if we win, and what will the benefits of it be, and and all that. But I never really got further than celebrating with the rest of the team at, at the end of the stage. I never thought about you know all the interviews and you know being on the news uh, after it. So um, and maybe a bit naive, not thinking about that um, beforehand, but. Uh, it's it's been a cool week and, and special so um yeah uh, the coverage has been great and, and for all the people that sent messages straight after the rally like there was so many was particularly on instagram and tried to re reply to everybody because you know uh, i didn't realize how many people are watching guys that you know i've obviously never met and they're sending messages with congratulations so um you know it's a big thank you to everybody yep lastly we spoke about this before but you do have a life outside of rallying as well. There is a job, albeit maybe you haven't spent much time in it this year by your own admission, that you have to you have to plow on with. Um, we know about the the family visits, the creating name and the retail side of it and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, that's that's where that's where reality is for you, I suppose, and all these things kinda calm down, yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been very lucky, you know, family have supported me from the very beginning, from go karts the whole way through. So like I said, they were out, you know, my family were out there in Greece to be able to celebrate with them was was nice. Um yeah, it's uh you know, I haven't I haven't done a lot of work uh in terms of the family business this year. It's been uh, a lot more focused to rallying and I suppose that's I mean that's what it requires. You know, I'm lucky that I'm able to have that flexibility that my dad gives me. So um yeah, whenever I whenever I wasn't watching on boards or planning logistics, it was trying to help out that side of things. So um, hopefully maybe give me a wee bit of uh, time to relax now after after the result, but I have a funny feeling it mightn't last too long. Yeah, we're going to have to work a bit harder for the inheritance, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, well, hopefully that's in about 20 or 30 years' time and uh, we're looking at you uh, ripping it up in, in WRC in the meantime. William, congratulations to yourself and Liam once more and a pleasure as always. Well done. Thank you so much. The Irish Rally Podcast is brought to you in association with PFT Travel, Tech and Tools, Rally Connection, SVS Productions, Hire a Van and Lines of Limerick.